What did a teacher say that broke your heart? You need to stay away from Kate. I was in fifth grade and my teacher told me I needed to leave my best friend alone. I was confused. I asked her why and was told me and Kate are no longer friends. I was heartbroken. I didn't understand why this was happening. I kept trying to make a contact with Kate to find out what was going on but she ignored me. At lunch, I was forced to sit alone. Kate was sitting with all our friends. Tears silently poured down my face as I tried to eat. My dad had just died of cancer a few weeks ago and now I had lost my best friend. My face must have shown my grief when I got home that day. My mom, who was usually too self-absorbed to notice me, asked me what was wrong. The tears started again as I choked out that I wasn't allowed to be Kate's friend anymore. She immediately got concerned and asked why, but the sobbing took hold and I ran to my room. While I was in my room I heard my mom make two phone calls, one was to my teacher. My mom demanded to know what happened. I guess my teacher told her that Kate's mom didn't want us to be friends anymore. My mom was pissed. I and Kate had been besties since first grade. Kate's mom had never liked me but I never saw this coming. My mom asked why they didn't call her. The teachers- Have you ever beaten a liar in court? I beat my ex-husband at his own game during our divorce proceedings. My ex had taken my cash to pay for things throughout our marriage and was racking up credit cards in his name, which I didn't know about, so it looked like he had all the debt, and I hadn't contributed financially. He intended to stick me with half of the credit card debt which was a lot. 30k or more. I didn't even know about this until the day of court. And, it was things that I had paid for. To counter his credit card debt, I had the house note. I got an inspection and a realtor who gathered info as to what houses were selling for in my area. He also had an inspection. I knew he would try to say the house was worth more than it was. I had the realtor show up as a witness. This weighed in more than his one inspection appraisal. He knew the realtor. He hated her because she was my friend. Her presence shook him up quite a bit and made him uneasy. I could see it. I didn't even count on this so bonus for me. Plus, I had a written inspection myself. These two things countered his inspection. Next, I made a list of all the household things he took with him which far outweighed the items that were left. I assigned monetary values to them. His assets far outweighed mine. Not only was his list more in value, but his list took up two pages, mine took up one quarter of a page. This alone created an image in the attorney's mind of how things were skewed. He claimed he wanted joint custody, over and over. I knew this was for monetary reasons to not pay child support. Otherwise, why not go for primary custody? So, knowing this, during mediation, I finally said if he insisted on joint custody I would refuse it and give him primary custody. I would take weekends. I would be the fun parent. He could take off work every time the kid was sick and couldn't go to school, every time our child had a day off school, and every summer he could find daycare all week. He would be responsible for homework, getting him to bed early, and getting him to school every day and then finding someone to pick him up from school and watch him until my ex got home from work from 3 semicolon 5 Monday through Friday. Well, he hadn't thought about all that. Once I put my foot down in mediation and said I either got primary custody, or he did, and I wouldn't budge, within a week I got a letter from his attorney he had conceded to me having primary custody. At first, they tried to call my bluff. Even the mediator looked at me in horror and said, you wouldn't give up your son, you love him too much, I said, exactly, I do love him too much, how can I get along with this man I'm divorcing to joint raise a son? We have completely different parenting styles. If I could get along with him to co-raise my son, we would still be married. I love my son enough to know that going back and forth yo-yoing between two households and raising a son in two different ways is much worse for him than letting him be raised by his dad. So, if he feels that strongly to raise him, then I can see. He can raise him and I will take the fun weekends running around to Chuck E. Cheese and amusement parks, staying up late, sleeping in with our pajamas on all morning. That sounds good to me. They were speechless. They knew I meant it, and I did. But then, my ex wasn't physically aggressive to our child so I could risk this. The slight possibility that I was wrong and he would go for the primary custody. However, I knew he didn't want custody to the odds were in my favor. I was able to play that card. Our case went to court. We were in a room with our attorneys, waiting to be called our turn. We had agreed on custody, and now it was about the house and the settlement. Money. We were debating. Because you can still resolve it before appearing before the judge. Well, I started telling stories about our true life every time any question was asked. Looking directly at my ex, portraying the victim I truly was. Do you have the receipt for this? Then my answer would be, well, I don't have those papers. Remember when you left me? That one day with no notice whatsoever? You pulled up in a U-Haul, and to my horror, you proceeded to leave me and then once I realized what was going on, I wanted to talk about it and try and work things out, but no, you were busy emptying the house. That day you decided all that stuff in the house was yours. What is the worst thing you have caught a family member doing? I caught my husband, 26 male, getting head for my 14 year old sister. My husband and I were over at my mom's house today, where my little sister stays. We were in the kitchen talking about how my sister pierced her ears at home without any ice, and pushed the needle right through her ear. My sister goes I don't know, the pain felt kinda good, and chuckled leaving the room. After she leaves my husband goes I bet she'd love rough intimacy and laughs. I'm frankly appalled at this point. Fast forward a few hours and my sister starts name calling my husband over text in a playful way. They start name calling each other back and forth over text. 
She called him a little pee pee she says sweet stuff. I'll leave the room to go to the bathroom and when I come back in, I heard her say at least if I had a wife I'd make her finish. He laughs and says you'll have to ask my wife about that. And continues to engage in this weird sexualized conversation. The whole thing really rubbed me the wrong way. The name calling seemed to turn into me fast and it fell off the The next time we went over the boat got straight back in, even around my mother. While we were playing Monopoly my sister needed to pay her rent, to him. So he says, ah, kiss my SS, and she playfully responded, well you can slap mine, with a wink as she passes the money to my husband. So my husband literally did, in front of my mom. From here on out it started to get worse, but it was turning physical. When we went home I said to him that I didn't like how my sister and we were getting physical. But he proceeded to brush it off, and just talk about her as if they were dating. Later that week while I was attending a girl's night, I remembered I forgot my new people eye necklace that I wanted to show off to my friends, so I went back home and through the window I could see my husband and little sister play fight. I wanted to see where this was going, so I silently crouched and watched the scene unfold. I could slightly hear their voices, and my little sister was arguing that she bet she could make him nut in under 30 seconds. My husband apparently being tay overly competitive, immature person and apparently child Tito as well, stripped down and said deal and immediately ran through the front door, but it was too late. My sister was giving my husband head and I guess I'm looking for advice or opinions on if what I felt was valid or not. My fat best friend wants me to gain weight so she doesn't feel insecure. Now she's mad that I don't want to. Me and my friend have been close for over 12 years, we met in middle school and have gone through everything together. High school, college, relationships, ups and downs, throughout all of it we have always stuck together but now, I might never be able to look at her the same again. For this story to make sense I should probably note that my friend is on the larger side weighing around 400 pounds, whenever we go out in public several people always look at her weirdly and it really upsets her. One day, after we both finished work, the two of us went out to get drinks. Being quite attractive, it's not uncommon for guys to offer to buy me a drink, I usually politely decline, but today had been a long day of work so I accepted the gesture. Instantly, it was clear that my friend was not happy. She began harassing the man flirting with me, calling him fatphobic and rude, he hustled away and she targeted her anger towards me. We had a long argument that night where she basically called me easily accessible and said guys only flirt with me because they know I'll entertain them. This upset me, a lot. We had grown up together and just because she was upset that nobody wanted to be with her she thought it was okay to insult and degrade me. We ended up settling the argument that night and I went to bed thinking that everything was over, I was so wrong. I woke up to a call from her at 8am saying she had to urgently meet with me in an hour, she called it an emergency. Regardless of the events from the night before, she was still my best friend, so I quickly got ready and met her at the location she sent. She seemed excited on the phone when we spoke and as soon as she met me she was ecstatic, it was like the previous night had never happened. I asked her why she was so happy and she told me she had a plan for the two of us to never get in an argument again. Understandably intrigued, I asked what the plan was and that's when she laid it all out. She said that if I really think I'm more attractive than her, which I did say last night in the heat of the moment, then I should gain weight too, in her words level the playing field. I thought she was joking but I looked into her eyes and she was dead serious. I have a naturally slimmer build, I'm quite tall and have a fast metabolism so I've been skinny my whole life, she knew this. But she insisted that it would bring us closer together, we could share more experiences, and be more alike. I declined, and told her how difficult it would be for me to gain the weight, and that I simply just didn't want to. Then, in the heat of the moment, I suggested that if she cared so much maybe she should just lose some weight. Not a good idea. She began screaming at the top of her lungs calling me a fake friend, and saying that I used her to boost my ego. Neither of these were true but it was pointless in arguing with her as she was clearly in denial. The two of us are no longer friends.